Hello everyone! Welcome back to Learn Academic English. On this channel, I help English learners take their language to a higher level, especially for school and work purposes. In today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about idioms. I'm going to show you 35 super common and useful idioms. After the lesson, I'm going to show you a quiz. You can take that quiz at the end of the video and be sure to let me know in the comments below how you do on that quiz. And I have a handout for you with the idiom and the definition for all 35 idioms that are in this video. So be sure to check the description box below for the link to that handout. You can just click file and download to keep it for yourself. And remember that if you want more connection with me every week, you can join my Instagram subscribers or my YouTube membership, and you can join my online classes. I teach live classes every week with a group of four other amazing teachers, and I would love to have you join us. If you would like to know how to join those classes, check the description box below for more information. Okay, let's get into those idioms. In today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about idioms for the workplace. The first one is to break the ice. To break the ice means to make people feel more friendly and willing to talk to each other. I'll break the ice. So we often use this at meetings or when there are a lot of new people who are together. For example, we can say, to break the ice, the group leader asked us to share our plans for the upcoming holiday. Or you might ask, what are some games that we could use to break the ice? Now, we also use this as a noun. We use the noun icebreaker. How about an icebreaker? For example, we need a good icebreaker for the meeting so that we can get to know each other. So again, to break the ice means that maybe when there are a lot of people together who don't know each other, they might not feel comfortable. But when you break the ice, you do something that allows the people to feel more friendly, comfortable, and willing to talk to each other. Okay, next, to call it a day. To call it a day means to stop working, especially because you've done enough or because you're tired. Well, I'm calling it a day. Let's call it a day and go home. For example, we often say, Whew, that was a busy day. Let's call it a day. Let's stop working. Or we could say, Good job today, everyone. Let's call it a day. Or, it's time to call it a day. It's time to stop working. Again, super common idiom that we use to announce that we've finished working for the day. It's time to stop and go home. Okay, number three, to get a foot in the door. This is a very common idiom and this is an important one to know because there really is not another way to say this. What does that mean, to get a foot in the door? To get a foot in the door means to get your first opportunity to work in a particular organization or industry. But this will get you a foot in the door. For example, working as an intern is a great way to get a foot in the door. Or, if you know someone who works at that company, could you help me get a foot in the door? It's like you're starting to enter that workplace. You have a foot in the door, so the door is not closed to you. The door to the company is starting to open, and maybe they will find that they will want to hire you to get your first opportunity to work there. All right, number four, the bottom line. Now, the bottom line is a common idiom that we use in many situations, and actually, I have a whole video that covers this expression, and I'll link that above. But the bottom line means the end result of something, or the most important point about something that has been discussed. Bottom line is that... For example, the bottom line is that our profits are falling, and we need to make changes now. That's the most important point. The bottom line is. Okay, number five, to be on the same page. Now, I also have a video all about this expression too because it is very, very useful. 
To be on the same page means that people have the same understanding. Everyone who is together has the same understanding of a situation or the same knowledge. You know, this is something we all need to be on the same page with. For example, let's start our meeting with a quick review so that we can all be on the same page. Or, let's go over what we talked about last time so we're all on the same page. Or for example, I don't think that I can work well with my boss because we just are not on the same page. We just don't have the same view or the same understanding. Number six, to think outside the box. Okay, so here you want to imagine that your thinking is like a box. And when you are close-minded or when you're not open to new ideas, you're in this box. But if you think outside the box, that means that you are willing to try new ideas or that you are innovative or that you have a new and inventive way of thinking of the problem. To think of new, difficult or unusual ways to do something, especially in business. Right, everybody start thinking outside the box. For example, we need to think outside the box if we want to come up with creative products for today's market. We need to be innovative. Number seven, to be ahead of the curve. To be ahead of the curve means to be in a position where you are more advanced or you're not afraid of taking risks. So this idea implies like imagine that you're driving down the road, okay, and there's a curve coming up. If you are ahead of the curve, that means that you're anticipating things that might happen or you are able to see the whole problem and maybe solve it first. This is especially used in business to imply that if you are thinking ahead or if you are more advanced, you're going to be able to be more competitive than other businesses. For example, we could say businesses that want to stay ahead of the curve are not afraid of taking risks to gain new customers. Okay, forward thinking businesses or businesses that are willing to take risks and do new things. Okay, number eight. Number eight is to get down to business. To get down to business means to get to work, to start working hard or to focus on the task at hand. For example, you can say, we have only four days left to finish this project. Let's get down to business. We need to get down to business. Let's get down to business. Number nine, to put something on the back burner. Okay, so if you look at a stove, the stove is going to have front burners and back burners. And if you think about when you're cooking, often you might put the most important things on the, in the front. And then maybe something that you can just kind of let sit there for a while is going to go to the back. So what this idiom means is that in life, we can put something on the back burner. That means that it has lower priority or that it's something that maybe you're going to wait and work on later. You're just going to let it sit there. You'll, uh, you'll tend to it later, but it's not something that right now is at the top of your priority list. So you might decide that it's a lower priority. It's something that you probably will deal with later, but it's not at the top of your priority list right now. So you're going to put it on the back burner. For example, we can say, I love your idea, but I don't have the budget. We're going to have to put it on the back burner for now. Put Missouri on the back burner. Okay, and finally, number 10, to have a full plate. I also have a video about this one, a short video. This is a very common idiom that we use to mean that we are very busy because we have a lot of things to do, a lot of different things to do. Or to be very busy because you have a lot of duties. For example, we could say, I can't take on any new projects because I have a very full plate. Or we can say, my plate is too full. So to have a full plate or my plate is too full. Both of those mean that you just have so many different things that you need to do and you don't have space for any more things. Your plate is full. There's no space for more items. I have a very full plate. 
In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you 25 common idioms with animals. To let the cat out of the bag. To let the cat out of the bag. This means to reveal a secret. For example, I don't want my current job to know this, so don't let the cat out of the bag. But I just accepted a new job and will be moving to New York soon. Number two, hold your horses. Hold your horses means to slow down or to wait. We use this idiom a lot. If someone seems to be overly excited to do something, we can say, whoa, hold your horses. For example, hold your horses. I'm not ready yet. I just need five more minutes to get dressed. Number three, to let sleeping dogs lie. To let sleeping dogs lie means to not try to change the situation or to leave something alone, like to not stir something up. Just leave it alone. It's okay the way it is. Let sleeping dogs lie. Number four, to kill two birds with one stone. To kill two birds with one stone means to get two things done at the same time. For example, I need to talk to my mom about our vacation and I need to borrow her vacuum. So I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna go there now and visit her. In that case, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna talk to her about the vacation and I'm gonna borrow her vacuum at the same time. Number five, to have ants in one's pants. To have ants in your pants means to be antsy, to have a lot of energy. You can't calm down. For example, geez, my little brother can't sit still. He has ants in his pants. Number six, to eat like a pig or to eat like a bird. To eat like a pig means to eat a lot, and to eat like a bird is to eat very little. Number seven, to have butterflies in one's stomach. This means to be nervous. For example, I'm so nervous about my presentation. I have butterflies in my stomach. Number eight, Raining cats and dogs. That means that it's raining really hard. We can say, wow, look at the weather. It's pouring. It's raining cats and dogs. Number nine, dog eat dog or a dog eat dog world. That means that it is very competitive. This is especially used in the business world or any other field that is very competitive. For example, it's not easy to be a business person these days. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. Number 10, to teach an old dog new tricks. This means to teach someone to do something new, especially if they're older or if they are a person who does not easily change. This is usually used in a negative way to refer to an older person or a stubborn person who doesn't change easily. For example, I know we want grandma to use Facebook, but I don't think she's gonna ever get the hang of it. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Or we could use it in a positive way like this. I've been exercising a lot lately and I've already lost 30 pounds. I guess you can teach an old dog new tricks. Number 11, to get your ducks in a row. To get your ducks in a row means to get everything organized. For example, you need to get your ducks in a row if you want this project to be a success. Number 12, a big fish in a small pond. A big fish in a small pond means that a person is important because they are living in a small place. For example, Uncle Jerry would probably get a better job if he moved to Silicon Valley, but he prefers to stay in his hometown where he can be a big fish in a small pond. This is the idea that um, maybe in a small town, um, there can be a person who feels like he or she is very important, but if they were to live in a bigger city, they would not even be particularly noticed. Number 13 the elephant in the room. This is actually a very common idiom and it has a pretty specific meaning, which means that in this situation, probably the person will always use the idiom because there isn't really another way to say it. 
The elephant in the room means something that everyone knows is there, but no one wants to talk about it. For example, I'm really looking forward to our family reunion, except for the elephant in the room. My aunt's drug problem is getting much worse. So this would mean that there's a problem, the aunt's drug problem, that everyone knows about, but it makes everyone uncomfortable and it's awkward, so no one wants to talk about it. Number 14, to feel like a fish out of water. To feel like a fish out of water means to feel uncomfortable because you're doing something new, different, or strange. For example, when I moved to Germany, I was really excited, but I quickly felt like a fish out of water. There were so many new things I had to get used to. Number 15, to drink like a fish. To drink like a fish means to drink a lot of alcohol. Watch out for Jerry, he drinks like a fish. Number 16, to be a fly on the wall. To be a fly on the wall means to be able to listen in and watch a situation that you're not supposed to see. We usually use this in hypothetical situations. In other words, we think about a situation that we would love to be able to see, but we cannot. For example, my son is going on his first date tonight. I wonder how it's gonna go. I wish I could be a fly on the wall. And that idiom is actually pretty common, and just like the elephant in the room, to be a fly on the wall, there isn't really another way to say that. Number 17, to have a frog in your throat. To have a frog in your throat means that you have a scratchy throat. You can say, <clears throat> sorry, I have a frog in my throat. Number 18, cat has your tongue, or cat got your tongue. This means that you can't seem to think of the words that you wanna say. For example, so when you can't think of what you wanna say, someone might ask, what's wrong? Cat got your tongue? Number 19, could eat a horse. Could eat a horse means I'm so hungry. For example, oh, I didn't have lunch and now I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Number 20, the lion's share. The lion's share means the largest part of something that goes to someone else. So think about what a lion does. If a lion kills an animal and there are other animals that wanna eat that dead animal too, who's gonna to be able to eat the most? The lion, because the lion is the most powerful. And the lion might leave some little scraps for some other animals to come eat. For example, I sold my first painting for $4,000, but the lion's share went to the director of the art gallery. Number 21, to be a night owl. To be a night owl means to stay up late often, and this is used to describe a person who naturally likes to stay up late. For example, we can say, it's hard for me to go to bed early. I've always been a night owl. And this is a very, very common idiom. Number 22, the rat race. The rat race refers to the modern system of society that encourages competition, fast living, and a lot of work. And we definitely describe American society as the rat race. For example, I might say, I'm thinking about moving to Portugal because I just want to get away from the rat race. Number 23, the black sheep of the family. The black sheep of the family is a person in a family who's always been different and rebellious. And usually this person is treated badly by the rest of the people in the family. For example, she's always been the black sheep of our family. When she was young, she left our family's religion, she went away on her own, and she was very rebellious. I always admired her courage, but other people in the family treated her as an outcast. Number 24, to quit something cold turkey. To quit something cold turkey means to give up something or to quit something very suddenly without going step by step. For example, we might say, after my aunt was diagnosed with cancer, she quit smoking cold turkey. And finally, number 25 is a verb to wolf something down. To wolf something down is to eat very quickly. Oh, I was so hungry, I wolfed that sandwich down. 
also a very common idiom. It's time to test your knowledge of these idioms by taking a little quiz. Now, I'm not going to ask you to use all 35 idioms. That would be too many to use all at the same time. But we are going to practice some of the idioms that we learned today. Now, you're going to need to have a piece of paper or your computer to jot down your answers. And after each section, we'll take a couple minutes to check our answers together. Okay, so let's go to the first ones. You're going to fill in the sentence with the correct answer. The idioms that we're going to choose from are have butterflies in one's stomach, ahead of the curve, the rat race, the elephant in the room, get one's ducks in a row, get a foot in the door, let the cat out of the bag, call it a day, the bottom line, and break the ice. Now notice with the two over here on the left, when you have the word ones, you're going to need to change it to the correct form, like my or your or his or her, their, etc. Okay, number one, I, every time I have to speak in public, pause the video if you need more time to think or to jot down your answer, and we're going to go on to number two. Before starting a project, it's important to by planning your budget and schedule carefully. Number three, we can't ignore any longer. We need to discuss our budget concerns immediately. Number four, my job is so stressful, it feels like I'm stuck in every day. Okay, when you're ready, let's move on to check the answers for that section. Number one, I have butterflies in my stomach every time I have to speak in public. Yeah. Number two, before starting a project, it's important to get your ducks in a row by planning your budget and schedule carefully. Number three, we can't ignore the elephant in the room any longer. We need to discuss our budget concerns immediately. Number four, my job is so stressful. It feels like I'm stuck in the rat race every day. Okay, moving on to the next ones. Number five, asking someone about their interests is a great way to... Number six, it's been such a long day. Let's and go grab a drink. Number seven, I know there are many factors to consider, but is that we need to make a decision now. Number eight, I hope to with the internship that I'm doing at the museum this summer. Okay, take a moment to think about the sentences, write down your answers, and when you're ready, we'll go to the next slide to check our answers. Number five, asking someone about their interests is a great way to break the ice. Number six, it's been such a long day. Let's call it a day and go grab a drink. Number seven, I know there are many factors to consider, but the bottom line is that we need to make a decision now. Number eight, I hope to get a foot in the door with the internship that I'm doing at the museum this summer. Before we stop, I want to tell you a little bit about the word internship. An internship is a position that usually a young person gets in a company or an organization. And this is usually for college university students who are either finishing their degree or who have just finished their degree. And they get an internship for the purpose of gaining experience, knowledge, and making connections in their field of study. 
Sometimes an internship is not paid. Sometimes it is paid. Um, but again, the purpose is to get experience and to make connections in your chosen field. Okay, so be sure to let me know how you did on this little quiz. There were eight sentences, so you can tell me how many answers you had correct and if you have any questions about this quiz. How did you do in today's lesson? Don't forget to let me know below how you did on the quiz and don't forget to get that handout so that you can continue to learn these idioms at home. Let me know if you have questions and I hope to see you back here again very soon. Take care.